This is Lesson 17 in our Calculus 1 series, the Mean Value Theorem. The Mean Value Theorem says that if we have a function f that is continuous on the closed interval ab and differentiable on the open interval ab, then there exists a c in the interval ab such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Or, this last statement can be written, f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c times b minus a. Now, this kind of thing is very useful in more advanced mathematics because it allows us to rewrite an expression like this using a derivative. Or, to rewrite a difference like this using a derivative. And that's very useful in mathematics. But here we're just learning the very basics of the mean value theorem and we're going to show existence of these points c and sometimes find those c values. Now let's take a look at what this is saying. Notice here that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the slope between these two points on the graph. So this is a secant line slope that we have here. And what we're saying is that there exists an x value, we're calling it c, in this interval so that the derivative at c, the slope of the tangent line at c, is equal to that secant slope. So if this is a and b, then our secant slope f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the slope of this red line. And the mean value theorem is saying if you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB, then there's going to exist a C value for which the tangent line has that same slope. That's what the mean value theorem is saying. And so in just a few minutes, we're going to use the mean value theorem to show existence of these points and also solve for a few of them. But first, let's take a look at what could happen if conditions one and two are not satisfied. If the conditions are not satisfied, there may exist such a C, but it's not guaranteed. So let's take a look. The first condition is that F is continuous on the closed interval AB. So let's take a look at an example where F is not continuous on the closed interval AB. Notice here, I drew this up so that F of A is equal to F of B. And so that secant slope is then gonna be equal to zero. But notice there's no point on this function's graph for which the tangent line slope is equal to zero. So there is no such C value in this case. Here's an example where condition two is not satisfied. F is continuous on the closed interval AB. That's continuous, but F is not differentiable on the entire open interval AB. And so again, I've set it up for convenience where F of A is equal to F of B so that this secant slope is equal to zero. But notice, there are no points on this graph that would have a tangent line with zero slope. So again, this C does not exist in this case. So again, these are just two examples of what may happen if your function does not satisfy the two conditions. Well, let's take a look at this example. Verify that the function satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem and find all values of C guaranteed by the theorem. So the first thing we have to do is show that f is continuous on the closed interval, and then we have to show that f is differentiable on the open interval. That would mean that it satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem. So we note that f is a polynomial. It's continuous on the entire real line. So of course it's going to be continuous on this closed interval 0 to 2. Also, we can take the derivative 3x squared plus 1, and this exists for all real numbers. So certainly it exists on the open interval 0 to 2. And so we can say that f is differentiable on 0, 2. So now we've shown that this function satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem on the interval 0, 2. And therefore, by the theorem, we can say there exists a point c in this interval such that f prime of c is equal to f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. And we're asked here to find such values of c. So let's compute what we have here, f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. 
Our original function is here. So f of 2 is going to be 8 plus 2 minus 1. That's 9. That's here. f of 0 is equal to negative 1. So we have 9 plus a positive 1. And then we have 2 minus 0 in the denominator, so we have a 2 in the denominator. So we have 10 halves, so we have 5. So this right-hand side, this secant slope is equal to 5. And what do we have here on the left-hand side? We have f prime of c. Well, we know that f prime of x is 3x squared plus 1. So f prime of c is 3c squared plus 1. So the mean value theorem is saying that there exists a c in this interval for which this equation holds true. Now we can find that c value by setting the derivative 3c squared plus 1 equal to this quotient 5. So let's solve here for c. Subtract 1 from both sides, divide by 3, and we have c is equal to positive or negative radical 4 thirds, or positive or negative 2 over radical 3. Now remember that we're asked to find the c values that are guaranteed by the theorem and that we're on the interval 0, 2. So only one of these c values is in that interval and that's the positive 2 over radical 3. And so c equals 2 over radical 3 is the c value we're looking for here. And if you want to check to make sure that 2 over radical 3 is in this interval, well, we know it's a positive number, so we know it's bigger than 0. The question is then, is it less than 2? 2 over radical 3 is going to be less than 2 radical 3 over 3, because we know that radical 3 is bigger than 1. So this is a bigger numerator, which means a bigger fraction. And this is equal to 2. So we get 2 over radical 3 is definitely less than 2. So this c value is in this interval. And so just to check that we answered the question, verify that it satisfies the conditions we did that, and find all values of c guaranteed by the theorem. Well, there's only one value of c, and that's it. Let's take a look at another. Verify that the function satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem, and find all values of c guaranteed by the theorem. f of x is equal to x over x plus 2 on the interval 1, 4. So again, we have to first show that f is continuous on this closed interval, then show f is differentiable on the open interval, 1, 4. Since f is a rational function, we know that it is continuous on its domain. And what is its domain? The only point of the real numbers that's not in this domain is x equals negative 2. So its domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to infinity. And certainly, the closed interval 1 to 4 is contained in this domain. Right? It's contained in this interval here. So f is definitely continuous on the closed interval 1, 4. Now let's take the derivative using the quotient rule. We get 2 over x plus 2 quantity squared. And as a rational function, this exists on its domain, which is the same domain as the original. So certainly, this derivative exists on the open interval 1, 4, which is what we need. And so f is differentiable on the open interval 1, 4. Therefore, by the mean value theorem, there exists a c value in this open interval such that f prime of c is equal to f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. So again, if we want to find this c value, we want to find f prime evaluated at c. That's 2 over c plus 2 squared. That's here. And we want to set that equal to this quotient, this secant slope. And so plugging in 4 and 1 into the original function f, we have 4 over 4 plus 2 and 1 over 1 plus 2. We have 4 6 minus 1 third over 4 minus 1. This is 2 thirds minus 1 third, so that's 1 third over 3, so that's 1 ninth. So this value of c that we're looking for has 2 over c plus 2 squared equal to 1 ninth. So let's cross multiply and then take the square root. So we have c plus 2 is equal to positive or negative radical 18. 
and so c is equal to negative 2 plus or minus radical 18 so far. Now notice negative 2 minus radical 18 is going to be a negative number, so that's not going to be in our interval. But let's just check that negative 2 plus radical 18 is in the interval. Well, what kind of number is radical 18? We know that it's between radical 16 and radical 25, so it's between 4 and 5. So if we add a negative 2 to it, that quantity will be between negative 2 plus 4 and negative 2 plus 5. So negative 2 plus radical 18 is between 2 and 3. And so it's definitely in this interval. So this is the c-value guaranteed by the theorem, and this is the c-value we're looking for. c equals negative 2 plus radical 18, and we can write that as c equals negative 2 plus 3 radical 2. Let's take a look at this example. Show that the equation has exactly one real root. Now, it's not clear from reading the problem that we're going to be using the mean value theorem. And also, this is kind of an advanced problem, and so you might not have an idea as to how to start right now, and that's okay. But you should be able to follow through as I go through it. Now, typically in mathematics, when we want to show that the equation has exactly one of something, we start by saying, suppose there's two, and we find a contradiction. So that's how we're going to start here. We're going to say, suppose a and b are roots of the equation. And then we're going to do some math on it, and we're going to find that we have an equation that doesn't make any sense, and so that'll be a contradiction. So suppose that a and b are roots of the equation, and let's call f of x 2x minus 1 minus sine of x. Then what we're saying is that f of b is equal to f of a, and that's equal to 0. Now already I see an f of b and an f of a, and so now let's try and see how we can use the mean value theorem here. We know that f of x is continuous and differentiable on the entire real line, so it's certainly continuous and differentiable on a, b. So by the mean value theorem, there exists a c value in this interval such that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f prime of c. Now we know that this quotient on the left is going to equal 0 because b and a are different, so this denominator is not 0, and f of b is equal to f of a and they're both 0. So here we're saying there must exist a c value where f prime of c is equal to 0. But notice that for this function, f prime of x is equal to 2 minus cosine x. And so f prime of c equaling 0 means 2 minus cosine c is equal to 0, which means cosine of c is equal to 2. And that's not possible, because cosine values are bounded by 1. So if we have two solutions to this equation, we get a contradiction by the mean value theorem. So therefore, there can't be two solutions to the given equation. Now, we didn't finish the problem, though, because it says show that there is exactly one root. So we have to show that at least one root is going to exist. How can we do that? Well, we saw in Lesson 6 that the Intermediate Value Theorem can help us show existence of a root. So if we can find an x value where this function is negative, and also an x value where this function is positive, then we know there must exist an x value for which the function is equal to 0. And so taking a look at our original function, we know that when x is equal to 0, we have 2 times 0 minus 1 minus 0. So f of 0 is equal to negative 1. We also know that at x equals pi, we have 2 times pi minus 1 minus 0. And 2 times pi is bigger than 1, so we know that we have a positive function evaluation. So at f of 0, we have a negative function evaluation. At f of pi, we have a positive function evaluation. So we know by the intermediate value theorem, there exists some k value in this interval 0 to pi 
such that f of k is equal to zero. So we just proved there exists a root for this function, and we showed there can't be more than one root. So now we've answered the question. We showed that there is exactly one root of 2x minus 1 minus sine x is equal to zero. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on the mean value theorem.